thank you so much for joining us for today's discussion on heaven on earth. So most of the evil in the world is done with the best of intentions, or so said T.S. Eliot. And 9-11, the guillotine and the inquisition were inspired by those who thought they had the highest moral principles. Many philosophers have concluded that morality is a subjective human invention. Should we then simply encourage and argue for acts we support and do without morality altogether? Or is the authority of morality the tenuous thread that holds society together? So to discuss this thorny issue, I have this wonderful panel with me. I have uh, Jason McKenzie Alexander, who is head of the Department of Philosophy, Logic and Scientific Method at the London School of Economics. Um, I have uh, Justin, who is a philosopher and historian of science at the University of Paris Diderot, and his um, recent book is called Irrationality, A History of the Dark Side of Reason. And to my far left uh, is Barry Smith, who is Professor of Philosophy and Director at the Institute of Philosophy at the School of Advanced Study at University of London. Can we kick off with you, Jason? Is morality necessary? Okay. So, if we think about whether morality is necessary, it's first important to get clear on exactly what sense of necessary we mean. To begin, it's, I think, hopefully, obvious that morality isn't logically necessary. If someone is acting immorally, they are not acting inconsistently. It's not a logical impossibility for people to violate the principles and rules of morality. It's also, I think, important to realize that when we talk about whether morality is necessary, we don't mean physical necessity. If we think about the rules and principles of morality, it's not as if they are somehow written into the fabric of the universe so that it's physically necessary that people, when they behave morally, are following those physical requirements in the same way that when people follow, the, say, the law of gravity, that they are following those physical necessities. Rather, when we think about whether morality is necessary, we, I believe we should approach this from thinking about it from the point of view of whether morality is practically or pragmatically or prudentially necessary. That is, whether morality is necessary in order to have a well-functioning society that is harmonious, well-ordered, well-regulated, and enabling people to achieve what it is that they want to achieve, given the constraints placed by everyone else. So if that's the way we understand the question of whether morality is necessary, then I would say, yes, morality is necessary. In the absence of morality, we would effectively find ourselves living in a state of nature where every person's particular interests, wants, desires, and preferences run the risk of clashing and conflicting with everyone else's. What the rules and principles of morality give us is a way of trying to mitigate those conflicts that exist when people try to achieve what it is that they want or desire or see realized. So morality then is necessary in order to try to achieve social cooperation, to try to help encourage altruism, and to try to help people behave in ways that effectively convert a problem of conflict and a problem and a conflict that could turn into a war of all against all of people trying to realize what they want at the expense of other people to instead a social environment where we can all work together to try to achieve what we want with the benefit and not at the expense of other people. Um, Justin, what do you, what, what do you think? Um, is morality necessary? Uh I agree with Jason's o opening gambit that there is uh, certainly no logical or physical necessity. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure uh, we can say that it is uh, not a question of incoherence, of a kind of logical incoherence when people fail to act rationally, but maybe we can come back to that later. Uh, I think that morality is best seen as 
a particular inflection of, or let's say a given society's conception of what uh, morality is, is a particular local inflection of some sort of natural evolved capacity. Uh, and we can see this inflection much as uh, it's often been said of natural languages, uh, that natural languages are the natural uh, kind of uh, expression of an innate capacity. Similarly, a uh, moral system is the local expression, like English is a local or regional language, of something that is there for all people in all times. So what is that thing that is there for all people in all times? It is extremely variable in its expressions. There are cultures in which uh, it is morally compulsory to eat the mortal remains of your grandmother, and there are cultures in which that is abhorrent and terrible. Um, there are cultures that, uh, uh, and this is something that Montaigne, already in the 16th century, fully well understood, uh, that consider cannibalism an important part of, let's say, the reproduction of society and the continuation of society from one generation up to another. Um, and so I'm not defending uh, what is so often too facilely called relativism, but I do think it is absolutely important to understand with Montaigne that morality etymologically, but also conceptually, is linked to the notion of mores, which is a pretty close synonym of customs, right? So there is something we have to respect in order to be members of the same society. Um, but in the end, it's probably not so different from having to respect the rules according to which you drive on one side of the road in the UK and on another side of the road on the continent. Um, perhaps uh, we can, behind these variations upon custom that we think of as morality, find something universal, but that's going to be, so to speak, very, very minimum. Thank you for that. Barry. So I'm standing in and I wish we had Rebecca Roach here who would tell you something much more careful and subtle than I'm going to, but I'm going to try and channel some of the things that I think Rebecca would have wanted to uh, bring out. So, so that sense of whether morality is necessary and we're wondering how to define that, is a way in which we can hear it as meaning it's kind of um, inescapable there's something a little bit inescapable about morality because when we see people who we think are not behaving morally, we talk about them being immoral. Now, you can only be immoral if there's a standard of morality against which you're going. If you imagine the idea of non-morality, it's an idea in which there's just no set of values and no distinctions between doing anything that counts as right or wrong. So that's not, that's not in the ballpark of, of human, the human condition, human society. We can't even imagine what it is to live in a world in which we don't feel some of the strain and some of the force of these uh, moral binds or uh, moral principles that, that we think we should stand by. Now, the trouble with the idea of taking a stronger line on morality and looking for something universal is that one way to guarantee universality is to think of moral truths or moral values as objective. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, objective means they're not, they're not dependent on me. In some sense, they're independent of me and therefore independent of all of us. They sort of stand there in some objective space that, that doesn't seem to then have a story about how we engage with them. Because if they are so objective and so abstract, so cut free from the, the things that move and bind us and motivate us, how do we adhere to them? Now, of course, there used to be such a system in various religious systems, you could state what the principles were and then think you had to adhere to them. Nowadays, because we can compare religious regimes, we can compare them on moral grounds and we can say we think some of them are not morally acceptable. So we're thinking of a higher standard. But the 
point I want to try and stress is that... To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.